The following segments are pre-recorded and sponsored by Longworth Productions. Available jobs in law enforcement on Try It Today. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another edition of Try It Today, coming to you once again from the beautiful Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. We'll tell you more about the garden later on, and later on is when the roundtable shows up, and gosh, no telling what those guys are going to get into, so stay tuned for the controversy on that. But between now and then, some great guests, important information coming your way, and I'll tell you what's really important these days is uh, where are the jobs? Are there jobs available? And especially, how about in law enforcement? And we have an expert in the field that's going to help us with that. First time visitor of the show, Ashley Burnett is Human Resources Technician for the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Native of Reedsville, <clears throat> and, uh, and we're so glad that you came and joined us to spend a few minutes with us. Now tell us about the importance of diversity within the Sheriff's Office. Why is that so important? Well, Forsyth County is a very diverse community. And it's very important that we gain the support and the trust of the community. And in order for us to do that, we should be a reflection of the community, a, re a reflection of the people that we serve. Right, and, uh, and you, you back that up in a lot of ways and you do great work. And one of the things you're doing, I think you sent me an email one day about a big event coming up. I think it's on March 23rd. And I believe it's geared to women. When we talk about diversity, a lot of times we talk, oh, well, you're talking about racial diversity. So we're talking about women too. Yes. Now what's this March 23rd thing about? So our event is called She Riff, and it is an open house for women. And those that attend, they will get to learn all about the career opportunities that we offer at our agency. So they will get to tour the agency, go and see areas like our communications, our detention center, and then they'll get hands on demonstrations with SWAT, with um, our K-9 units, and with our Real-Time Intelligence Center so that they can see what it looks like to be employed with our agency. Yeah, and it's important to get more women involved in law enforcement, isn't it? It is. It's very important. I mean, it, it, it sort of sends a message, you were talking about earlier about, you know, being diverse, but it sort of sends a message to the community that, you know, it does. Um, now, does this cost anything to go to this event on May uh, March 23rd? The event is absolutely free. Okay. Um, we will have giveaways and we will also have breakfast and lunch for those that attend. All right, if, if a lady shows up to this who's interested in law enforcement, what is she apt to learn or see at that event? What's going on? She will see a lot of women in a lot of the roles that they will get to learn about. Role models right in front of her. Right in front of them. Yeah, are you gonna, uh, what kind of things will, can you learn at the event uh, about certain types of jobs? I know you're gonna try to get them familiar, you're gonna sort of introduce them to various fields, is that right? Yes, they will be introduced to various fields and they'll get to see exactly what it looks like in All those right. roles. Well, yeah, now aside from, from women, I know that from talking to Sheriff Kimbrough that you know sometimes uh, people, man or woman, um, say, well, I'm interested in law enforcement, you know, but I just, you know, Ashley, I just don't think I can be a, on patrol. I just don't think I want to carry a gun or whatever. But there are lots of opportunities for women, right? There is. We offer civilian positions as well, so not just law enforcement roles. Right. Uh, now, uh, can, if somebody goes to this website, I want to put this up on screen. It's uh, G-O-Go, F-C-S-C-O, which stands for Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. Uh, G-O-F-C-S-O-N-C.org. I'm assuming if people go to that website, they can learn about things in general, but also maybe register or sign up for this. You want them to register, right? That is correct. So they can register from that site and they can also visit all of our social media platforms. There is a link in the bio that will take them directly to the registration. And we also have an event page on Facebook directly for the she Ruth event. Right. You know, you and I have never met until just now, so I'm just curious, was anybody in your family or extended family in law enforcement in any way? Or, I mean, how did you get interested in going into this field? I'm just curious. I have no one that was already in this field. It's just something that I was always interested in. Really? Yes. Even from like high school? Mm -hmm. and, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so when you were at Glenn High School, they said, look out for her. She's going into law enforcement. That's right. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot, Ashley, for doing this. Will you come back and see us sometime? I will. All right. We'll be right back after this. The world's brightest are Fulbrights, Goldwaters, McNairs, and Spartans. 
prestigious doesn't have to be expensive. And we know you will make a difference wherever you go. UNCG. Find your way here. Back now on Try Today, and let's spend a little time talking about exercise physiology. What does that mean? We're going to find out with a special guest. On my right is Cameron Taylor. He's an exercise physiologist with Northern Cardiac and Pulmonary Rehab. That's part of the Northern Regional family of, uh, in Mount Airy. We welcome you to the show. Thank you for having me. Glad um, to be here. What is an exercise physiologist? Before we get going, just help me with that. Sure. So an exercise physiologist is someone that has usually a bachelor's degree in exercise science. Um, generally, I kind of like to think of it as in between a personal trainer and a physical therapist, where we know more about exercise than maybe a personal trainer does, but not to the extent that a physical therapist does. They usually do their uh, doctoral program in that, and so it's kind of a mid-level. Right. Now, what, what is pulmonary rehabilitation? Sure. So pulmonary rehab uh, is a medically uh, supervised program for people with chronic lung disease. Um, unfortunately, people, um, there is no cure for um, chronic lung disease, and so this yeah, is... Yeah, my dad, before he died, he had COPD, and it just, you're just trying to manage it. But. Right, right, and that's one of the big things we try to do is help with patients with uh, managing their symptoms, um, improving and increasing their strength and endurance, and improving their overall quality of life. Yeah, I think that sometimes there's a misconception about that, and, and if you've lived through this with a family member, you, your first thought is, okay, just, just relax, lay down, don't do anything. But that's the opposite of what you should do, right? Right. You should definitely try to exercise with what you can, right? Everybody's got a certain capacity with what they can do, but you know, exercise is going to be one of the best things to try to help with that. Now, other than folks like my dad who went through you know, what you're talking about with, uh, when he had COPD, are there other people with other conditions that can benefit from pulmonary rehab? Sure. So uh, really anyone with uh, lung disease can benefit from pulmonary rehab. Um, the bulk of the patients that we see over at pulmonary rehab are generally uh, coming in with things like COPD uh, or interstitial lung disease, but we get lots of different types of people with things like sleep apnea or cystic fibrosis um, or different diseases like that. Well, if I come in there and I have a, a, a lung disease, an illness, I mean, what can I expect to happen if I, if I come under your program? What happens? Sure. So it generally starts off with the referral, and that's uh, signed off by an MD or a DO, and then that information will then come and uh, we'll uh, have our administrative assistants talk to their insurance providers. And once that's done, um, we'll set you up with an initial assessment. During that initial assessment, we'll go over uh, your medical history, any kind of medications you may be taking, um, and any kind of physical um, maybe limitations you may have. So like do you have shoulder pain, back pain, hip pain, knee pain, those kind of things that are going to be really important to us as we design the program for you. Um, and then we'll do a short stress test um, at the end to see just kind of where you're at right now. And this isn't just senior citizens like myself. I mean, you help younger people too, right? Exactly. So we've had people that have come in, you know, mid 30s and 40s to people that have been almost 100 years old. And so it, it, lung disease affects anyone and everyone. Uh, let me ask you a personal question since I have you here. And that's about, you know, why you decided to go into this. I mean, was there a a therapist, a doctor, a nurse, anybody in your family or a teacher, somebody said something to you about healthcare. Why did you want to go into this kind of field? Sure. So I went into healthcare because, you know, as cliche as, cliche as it sounds, you know, I wanted to help people. Um, but um, I think it went more into that. Um, I wanted to be able to be with people whenever they were very vulnerable and be able to be there and be an inspiration to them. Uh, my grandfathers, both of them actually passed away from uh, progressive forms of. Um, lung diseases, one from lung cancer and one from pulmonary fibrosis. Right. And so seeing them and seeing how their diseases impacted their daily life and you know having a hard time breathing and getting around, that was made a lasting impact with me. Well, bless your heart, I appreciate that. Uh, let me just put up something on screen here because uh, I want people to see this. The general website for the hospital, choose northern.org of course, but for northern cardiac and pulmonary rehab, you can also call them directly for information. And correct me if I get this wrong, 336-783-8448. Uh, I believe that's right. That's right. And uh, they can give you more information. And uh, again, you get there through a referral, but, but call there and check it out, and they can do a lot of things for you. I really appreciate what you're doing for folks. I appreciate the fact you went into this field, and I hope you'll come back to the show sometime. We'll do it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cameron. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you that Try It Today is now streaming on WFMY Plus, available free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Mm -hmm. 
Back now on Try Today, and I always like to salute folks who are involved in education and helping students, and so it's appropriate. We have a special guest from Shift Ed with us right now, first time visitor of the show. Amanda Mell is manager of elementary programs for Shift Ed. Good to see you. Yes, good morning. Thanks for having me. I want to get to kindergarten and things like that in a second, Absolutely. but just in a few seconds, what, in, some, in case somebody hasn't tuned in before and didn't know about Shift Ed, what do you all do? Yeah, Shift Ed is an education nonprofit. Right now we work in Guilford County Schools from cradle all the way through college age students and even beyond. Um, we have all sorts of focuses, whether it's academics and elementary, career development, middle school, scholarships, preparation for whatever career pathway that our students may want to take. Right, and a lot of times when we talk about the show, we, we'll focus on, okay, scholarships for college Absolutely. or this or that, but today you and I want to talk about kindergarten. I've been hearing about a kindergarten resource fair. When is it? Where is it? And what's it all about? It sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. This is actually our first event that we will throw in the kindergarten space. And this event will take place in two forms. Our first one will be in High Point um, with the city of High Point. And they have created a wonderful event that is actually for all families and ages. And we will run the kindergarten registration area corner if you may say right. that is on april 6th in high point and then our second event is in greensboro on april 13th that is specifically for kindergarten registration anyone in guilford county can come to either event and we'll be able to have the same resources there now, since since shift is focused mainly i know you're expanding but mainly for now it's kind of guilford county so that makes sense okay greensboro high point mm -hmm. um, now when you talk about the city is that it's a city sort of a partner on this or yeah we have a couple different partners so the high point one will be run by city of high point shift ed and a couple under other wonderful organizations the greensboro fair our main partner as all of our work guilford county schools right. um, they'll have a hand in both fairs we are also will work with the city of greensboro and a few other organizations for that as well now let me ask a stupid question who are these <laughs> fairs best for uh, the parents of kids who are almost ready for kindergarten or i mean who, who should come yeah if your student is getting ready to enter kindergarten for the 2024-25 school year this fair is for you you are welcome to bring kids and encouraged to bring kids to both events we will have crafts, music, games, but parents will benefit the most because they'll be able to get into all the resources of whether they've signed up already or haven't even started thinking about it. Yeah, give me an example when you talk about services and resources. Give me an example of something somebody might ask you at the at the fair that you Absolutely. Might help with. So we may have a question as basic as where is my student going to kindergarten? What's my district school? All the way to how can I sign up to get my vaccinations done? Um, where are the after school sign ups? Where can I get into clubs? What can my student do this summer to prepare for kindergarten in the fall? We'll have resources touching health care after school programs, recreational, um, Guilford County Schools will have many resources as now, well. Now this is open to the public, it's free, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, right. free but, for everyone. But here's my question, do I have to bring anything with me or? Yes, so if you have not registered for kindergarten, it would be helpful if you're planning to register at the fairs to bring a proof of residency, your child's birth certificate, and immunization records if you have it. If you do not have any of those, we will be able to help you figure out where you can get them in time for kindergarten registration. All right, up on the screen, I think we're talking about the, the April 13th event, but as Amanda mentioned, the April 6th event uh, uh, prelude, is the prelude to that in High Point. So April 6th and April 13th. But anyway, Kindergarten Resource Fair is what you need to know. And the main thing is to go to this website for more information, shifted.org. Go to shifted.org for more information. And, and I think you'll find that helpful. I guess before time runs out, since you and I haven't met, uh, you, you seem so excited and enthusiastic yes. about this. What in your background led you to want to get into this field of working with, you know, childhood education and helping students? And was there anything, did you have a teacher in the family or what? I actually was a teacher. So prior to COVID, I started my career as an elementary teacher after many years working in children's spaces anywhere that I could. Um, through COVID, my career path changed a little bit and I was given the opportunity to work in this department. And so I still get to work with all the wonderful elementary schools in the district while still being in more of a manager position, getting to do a little bit more than I was doing in the classroom. Well, I just think that's great. And I appreciate all you do. And I know folks will love coming to those events there. And thanks for telling thanks. us about it. Thanks, absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll be right back after this.
North Carolina's economy is growing, bringing new businesses and opportunities. The need for electricity is growing too. At Duke Energy, we're meeting the challenge, providing even more electricity that's cleaner, reliable, and that stays affordable. We're getting out of coal and reinvesting in our communities with a diverse, balanced mix of energy sources and making targeted upgrades to the grid so that North Carolina can thrive in a smarter energy future. Back now on Trying Today, time to talk about theater with Mr. Theater and a special guest that he brought along on my right. Of course, my good buddy, Dave Briggs, director of High Point Theater. His special guest is Jamie Albritton, artistic director for the Piedmont Opera. Good to see both of you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, Jim. Dave, let me, uh, just for, I want to give you just a, if you would, just a quick thing about reminding people that you allow other groups, universities, colleges, and other things to come in and do shows, right? We do, yeah, absolutely. And uh, when we, especially we have opportunities to do so. And we're certainly tickled to have the Piedmont Opera join us. Part of the reason why they're with us this year and the School of the Arts is with us is because the Stevens Center is under renovation. But our goal is to make that a, a, a long-term uh, relationship. Right. And I'm really excited about that. All right. Uh, now, Jamie, let me uh, get you to talk about Marriage of Figaro. <clears throat> Maybe you can give me a 10-second synopsis for people that have never seen the opera. So, A, what's it about? When is it going to be? Uh, Figaro's going to get married. A uh, whole opera. <laughs> well, that's it's it. it's that's a tricky the end one. Of the show. We don't need to go. <laughs> All right. He's, uh, he and his wife are, are battling all of the, the forces that are against them in the house of Count Almaviva to get married, but by the end of the day, they do very happily so. But the intrigue to get there is a lot of fun. And that's what, March 22nd and 24th? Yep. Okay. At the High Point have Theater. A, High Point Theater. I think we've got a graphic up there to show March 22nd and 24th, Marriage of Figaro. That's great. And, and, and you want this to be for everybody, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Opera's always been for everybody. You know, we are in the South, the place of where we tell tall tales, and that's all we do with opera. We take orchestra, we take singers, we take theater, we put it all together in the effort to tell a really compelling story. All right, well, let me turn to somebody who always tells <laughs> tall tales, uh, Dave Briggs. Let's go down a couple of things we want to give a plug for. <laughs> sure. One is the Banff Film, Film Festival. I always mess up. Is it Banff? Or? Banff. The Banff. Banff, Banff International There's Film Festival. There's no vowels Festival. in there. There's not, there's not <laughs> vowels in there. Film Festival, Monday, March 25th. What's March that about? 25th. So it's a collection of the best of the best from the Banff International Film Festival. These are documentaries. They are extreme in many cases, where you got folks, you know, riding along mountain peaks and so on. And uh, it, it, some of it'll, it'll, it'll give, give you goosebumps. It's okay. Uh, UNC School of the Arts presenting a spring dance on April 25th and the 27th. Uh, right. So they, they'll be in just like they did their opera in, in February. Uh, they're doing the Firebird, which is their, their their big piece, the big opera or big ballet, right. and then they have several other uh, dance programs with that as well. And one of my favorites, the Sound of Music, coming up May the third and fifth. You know, I actually played uh, Captain Von Trapp in the sixth grade. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. I could see that. Yeah, you can especially see that. with the whistle. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we love having High Point Community Theater here. That's a great warhorse. And and one more plug for for the Piedmont Opera and Marriage of Figaro. If you are, haven't been to a, an opera, this is a very accessible opera, and you're going to learn a lot, and, and I think you're going to love it. Well, the, uh, maybe I shouldn't ask this, but uh, uh, Jamie, is, the, is it in English, or is it in Italian, or French, or, or what, what's the language? You actually should ask this. It's in Italian, but uh, we show super titles above the screen, so everything that is being sung is being translated in real time in a screen up above the, the action. So wow. first of all, we have great actors, you don't need them. But second of all, if you want to see what they're saying, all you got to do is look up, look down, look up, look down, you're good right. to go. And the music's great. The, it's the music universal. is amazing. It's just great. Um, I want to put up a couple of things here on screen. First of all, to give a pl another plug, Marriage of Vigoro, coming on uh, March 22nd and 24th. Up on screen, PiedmontOpera.org is the main website, Piedmont Opera. Dot org where you can find out all sorts of things about what's going on with the opera and uh, what Jamie's up to. And then the general website for High Point Theater, highpointtheater.com, and I remind you that's two T's in there, highpointtheater.com. But the, the best thing to remember is the number on screen, 887-3001, because that is the number you call, not scalpers, this is where you call directly to get uh, tickets. That's the ticket number, and I hope you will do that. Uh, and Dave, I uh, appreciate you bringing Jamie along. Jamie, will you come back sometime? Absolutely. All right. Are you going to stay with us for the round table? All right. We'll be right back after this. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you to catch my column, Longworth at Large, and Yes Weekly, every week. It's available throughout the triad, or you can go online, yesweekly.com. Fly local, fly easy, fly PTI. You know, it's hard to believe the Safe Sober program has been going strong for over 30 years. And over 600,000 students have made the pledge to stay safe and sober on prom night. You know, Griff, it's had a huge impact on our community. Yeah, you're right, David. And now we're making sure the message continues year-round so everyone can join us in supporting our students. Learn more and take the pledge at safesober.com, sponsored by Daggett Schuler. Banking is like going for a swim. You don't need all the complicated stuff, but you don't want to feel exposed either. At Truliant, we give you just what you need so you can manage your money on the go or stop by a branch whenever you need to. It's all about having options while also keeping life simple with low rates, free financial advice, and friendly faces. So check out Truliant. We have just what you need. Back now on Tribe today, just about time for the round table, but a quick shout out to the good folks here at Senior Botanical Garden. Come on out to the garden, something always to see and things to do. You can volunteer, you can have your functions here. Please do that. Also, one other thing I wanna note, once again, Alliance Insurance Services is uh, doing their scholarship program for high school kids who submit videos that talk about distracted driving, the dangers of distracted driving. And the scholarships will be awarded. You can find out about it by going to My Alliance Insurance Dot com. So we congratulate Christopher and all his folks. All right, on my right, but always political left, Ogie Overman's with us. Mr. Theater is here. We held him over from the last segment. Dave Briggs, Keith Cranberry, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. Guys, let's get to it. The debate <coughs> rages on in Greensboro and other cities as to whether police body cam footage should routinely be released to the public. City officials warn that body cam footage of innocent people would end up on the internet, could discourage other people from calling 911 if they needed to. Question is, should we all have the right to see body cam footage or should our privacy be protected? Ogie. Yeah, I think that's a bogus argument about discouraging people from calling in 911. Uh, I absolutely think the public has a right to see that. That is absolutely public domain. In any, just about any case, yes. Dave. I frankly think it's voyeurism and I think that it should be kept private unless there is a reason to actually show that video. A lot of it is designed to protect the officers and if, it's, if there's something that's actually happening that they're videoing, that, that's a different story. If my family's involved in it, maybe I want to see it. If somebody's done something wrong to my family, but as a general rule, what do you think, Keith? I, I think that the body cam isn't to protect the officer, it's actually to protect the, the citizens because many times we find out that one thing was said and another thing was done, but I think it, if you're involved in it and you request it, you should be able to see it, but I don't know if everyone should see everything in the body cam. All right, Congress is now poised to pass legislation that would ban TikTok in the United States. We've talked about this before, but now it's almost a reality. Elected officials fear that Chinese-owned social media company poses a threat to our national security. Guys, are you okay with denying Americans access to TikTok? Okay. It's going to be tough. A lot of people just uh, addicted to TikTok. I mean, they really are, and it's a legit outlet for a lot of performance art and stuff. But the deciding factor for me is that Trump came out against it. He said you should ban it. Then one of his cronies said, "Well, you know, their algorithms are pushing people toward you." And then he, he changed. Oh well, I like TikTok. Dave, ban it. Well, President Biden wanted to have his own TikTok channel. Uh, I think you can't put this uh, back in the bag. They can ban it, but it's going to end up in the Supreme Court as a First Amendment issue. Okay. I don't think you're going to ban it. And do we think that's the only way that the Chinese are gathering information? No. Uh, at last week's State of the Union address, a man in the gallery was removed by Capitol Police because he was shouting at President Biden. Yet Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene was allowed to shout at Biden and remain in her seat. Guys, do you think members of Congress should be removed from the Capitol if they shout at the president? Absolutely, 100%. They should have got Marjorie whatever out of that night. They should have yanked her out. Her, her out. Yep. Dave, this is a matter of decorum. What do I you think? Thought it, I thought it was very rude. Uh, and should she have 
she just shouldn't have done it. I'd like to see them have a little more decorum. Okay, I don't think you should be penalized from yelling at the president, except in certain circumstances. But it's a free country, free speech. So you're okay with people I'm, shout? Yeah, I mean, right. as long as it's not in, in certain situations. State of the Union, I don't think you should be yelling. Yeah, but don't, don't shout when I'm speaking, though. I was getting ready to shout because you, <laughs> yeah. I needed to give you my, my I know. My, my yeah, I don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> we've, talked, we've talked a lot about raising the federal minimum wage from $7 to maybe $15 an hour. Each state has their own thing. We're talking about federally. But California Congresswoman Barbara Lee stepped up to the plate and said, let's wait, raise it to $50 per hour. What do you think, Hoagie? Didn't Barbara Lee give up her seat so that she could run for Senate right. against right. Schiff and Garvey? But I mean, that would eliminate poverty ostensibly, except. That's outrageous. That I, mean, I like her, but She's that's a outrageous. Lunatic. Does she think that that $50 is going to help, people, help just the employees? Because the folks who are, who are going to have to sell them goods, that price is going to go up as well, and it's going to go up across the board. Absolutely. That's Kay. just stupid. What do you think, Kay? I, I don't think she's a lunatic, but I think that $50 is, is, a, is a bit much, yeah. But. A new study shows that Winston-Salem leads the nation in traffic fatalities during rush hour. In fact, the city ranks 40% higher than the national average in that. Uh, would you like to see speed limits lowered just for rush hour in this area, Ogie? You know, given those stats, it might not be a bad idea, Jim. I've been in those rush hour traffic jams, and I mean, I can kind of see it. Yeah, Dave. I've driven through Winston at rush hour. It seems like that rate has already gone down because you can't drive fast. Yeah, Keith. I, I think it's more about people on their cell phones. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you're if you're driving fast and you're on my on your cell phone, you're going to have a facility. I think we need to look at the cell phones more than that than goes the to the whole thing that uh, uh, Christopher Cook was talking about that day with the distracted driving. Okay, well, uh, finally, guys, according to a new poll, Americans still believe that in the case of heterosexual couples, the man should always pay for the first date. Guys, did you always pay for your first date, Ogie? I don't, I don't know, Jim. I, that's kind of antiquated, really. I mean, women pay for dates all the time. Dave, I get women to pay for my meals all the time. Do you pay for Elizabeth's <laughs> first I, date? I, I've always paid for the first date. Really? Yep. Keith, what about you? Have you always paid? When I was when I was much younger, they wanted to pay me to go out with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what can I say? You know. Yeah. But I, I would pay though. I yeah. would pay. I would pay. We, we all we all pay a lot after it. Exactly. Don't we? All, yeah. Pay, all right. Well, that's, <clears throat> that's a Meli <laughs> Melissa's back there smiling. That's right. <laughs> Melissa just indicated by a certain symbol that she. You raised a certain finger. All right, now, um, oh, well, that's all the time we have. Oh, except for this. On April 8th, we're going to have a, an eclipse of the sun, which means we'll be totally in the dark, you know, like election deniers. <laughs> Did you get that? Like that. For all of us here, I'm Jim Longworth. We'll see you next week.